Upon hearing of Lee's surrender at Appomattox Courthouse, South Carolina faced the end of the Civil War. That's just what I am. I'm glad I fought again. I only wish we'd won. I ain't asked any pardon for anything I've done. I... The war's painful outcome for South Carolina included more than 23,000 lives lost. and the financial loss of 400,000 slaves, for whom the war's end meant freedom. And freed with no land, no money, no formal education, freed and told you're free to go. Many in South Carolina feared the end of slavery meant revolution. Freed African Americans, while not planning a revolution, did assert their new status. South Carolina men, hardened by combat in one of the 19th century's bloodiest conflicts, refused to accept the verdict of history, and white insurgency exploded across the state as broken fragments of Confederate regiments sought to intimidate newly freed African Americans. They also come along at a time when the federal government has decided to be sort of less involved in matters in the South. And so they can practice intimidation openly. And it worked. But in 1867, the process of Reconstruction began, requiring South Carolina and its sister states in the South to draw up new constitutions, and most importantly, to guarantee the right to vote to all males, regardless of color. Black South Carolinians seized this new opportunity offered unto them. Freedmen in South Carolina registered to vote in overwhelming numbers, and South Carolina's 1868 Constitutional Convention consisted of 124 members, 76 black and 48 white. Where Reconstruction became a tragic era in American history, this terrible period where there's these, these myths that, uh, 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 that emerge that South Carolina got requested a whole bunch of ignorant Negroes. Those African Americans who participated in, in Reconstruction, all of them uh, at least understood that they were, who they were representing and what they needed to do. In the decade after Reconstruction began, Blacks in South Carolina exercised real political power. Voter registration among African American men remained high, and the period also created many social and economic opportunities. But many white South Carolinians refused to accept their changed situation. Although they had lost the war, they remained determined to win the peace. The Ku Klux Klan became the primary embodiment of white South Carolina's lost cause. Yet even as the Confederate soldiers terrorized and intimidated blacks, African Americans still continued to vote in large numbers. In 1876, a supporter of Wade Hampton for governor of South Carolina advocated a plan of violence and fraud to restore white rule. According to the plan, Every Democrat must feel honor-bound to control the vote of at least one Negro by intimidation, purchase, by keeping him away. Each individual may best determine how he may accomplish it. Martin Gray, former Confederate General. On Election Day 1876, elements of the plan prevailed. African Americans appeared at their polling place to find it surrounded by men prepared for violence. Fraud occurred throughout the state, as many counties received more votes than there were registered voters. In 1876, you also have this contested presidential election. There's literally this backroom deal where Southern Democrats 
get together with a Northern Republican, and they say, look, your candidate gets um, the electoral votes of our states if, in return for that, you'll pull federal troops out of the South and essentially allow Reconstruction to fall apart. If Reconstruction was this experiment in democracy where you have people who formerly were slaves writing constitutions, trying to create a democratic society, what happened? Why did it go away? Why did it go away so quickly? The answer is really violence and intimidation is what destroyed those Reconstruction governments. South Carolina's economy had been dominated by cotton production that had heavily depended on slave labor. That slave-based economy amounted to a house of cards blown away by the war, which transformed South Carolina from one of the wealthiest of southern states to one of the most devastated. Soon after the collapse of Reconstruction, Whites used their political and social power to begin disenfranchising black voters, and racial segregation began in public life. It was the rough and tumble rhetoric of Benjamin Ryan Tillman as South Carolina's governor that deeply influenced the style of Southern politics into the 20th century. He was speaking specifically for the white farmer, and may like this message that, that he gave. Uh, about independence, about better farming methods, and about ranks. Disenfranchised blacks from voting. The 1895 South Carolina Constitution was disenfranchised blacks from voting, so a lot of things went from bad to worse. She had to be able to prove that you could read or pay taxes on at least $300 worth of property. Very significant, the poll tax but in the most commonly used was called the understanding clause. You go in to vote, and the registrar of voters is sitting there, and the registrar of voters who controls the polling place is white and is part of the power structure. And he would say, read this, and then interpret it. There was this method used called the eight box law. It was essentially to confuse uh, black voters there would be a series of boxes. You couldn't just cast a single vote. You actually cast eight, sometimes more, votes. And each uh, ballot had to be put in the correct box. If it wasn't put in the correct box, then it was no good. Your grandfather voted, then you can vote, which of course for former slaves let them out. You could vote if you could prove that you had voted in 1878 and you had two white people <coughs> who were willing to testify to that. There were only actually a, a, a fairly small number of black Republicans still voting. My race needs no special defense. All they need is an equal chance in the battle for life. African-American delegate, Robert Smalls.